team project was on psychology. It was me, Caitlin, and Heidi. So what is psychology? According to Ohio State University, psychology is the scientific study of the mind and its behaviors. What do psychologists study? We have the mental proce processes, which are all the things that the human mind can do naturally. We have brain functions, which include how we think, learn, and remember. And then behaviors, which are how we interact with our own environment. Some of the questions that are proposed by psychologists would be, why do people suffer with mental illnesses? How do people deal with emotion and stress? What can be optimized in communities and workplaces for well-being? And how does personality change across lifespans? Now we're going to look into the psychology at NC State University. So we have a little bit of an overview of all of the breakdowns of the um, places. It starts off with the big picture, which is CHAS, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, which um, psychology falls under. Then it has its own academic department, which is the Department of Psychology, and it is a social sciences discipline. We offer psychology minors and majors at NC State. So the major just sets you up for a human services job or career in that pathway, and it gives you a broad understanding of psych psychological theories and applications. Some of the skills and knowledge that you can develop as a psychology major is research, biological analysis, behavioral analysis, and cognitive science. You will have the ability to locate and extract and organize given information from topics. You can take a scientific approach to biological content. You can use your scientific disciplines to apply approaches to behavioral science and study the human mind and brain. Some of the psychology classes at NC State that are interesting to us were psychology of gender, abnormal psychology, and personalities. Some of the related minors that you can take with psychology are cognitive science, criminology, and sociology. Some of the career paths you can take with a psychology degree are you can become a psychologist, a human resourcer, a counselor, or a social worker. And then we're going to talk about some of the people in the psychology department at NC State. We have Laura Widman, and she teaches the class of human sexuality and intro to psychology. She does research on adolescent sexual decision making and adolescent communication about sexual topics. We have Vanessa Volk. She teaches health psychology and she researches black communities, racism, stress, and health behaviors. And then we have Dr. Amy Halbertstadt and she teaches psychology of emotion, independent study in emotion, and she also is our main researcher with the Fab Lab, which we'll be talking about next. At NC State, we have a research institution, which is the Fab Lab. So in the Fab Lab, um, it stands for Family Effects, Belief, and Behaviors. They are a team of 10 undergrad students, three graduate students, and one postdoctoral fellow with Dr. Amy Halberstadt leading the team. So their research centers around three different things. One, uh, what the developmental processes are, uh, experience, expression, and understanding of emotion. Uh, what the emotion socialization processes in family, school, and culture are. And then finally, what the inadvertent ways in which racism emerges and perpetuated and is perpetuated in emotion-related perceptions and socialization messages. So the publication from the Fab Lab that we chose is Teachers' Understanding of Racial Inequality Predicts Their Perceptions of Student Behaviors. So the participants of this study were uh, teachers selected from five North Carolina school districts. Of the 228 teachers selected, 78% of them were female. 82% um, were white, 10% were black American, 4% Latinx, and 4% Asian, and then 43% of the teachers selected also had a master's level education. So the procedures of the um, research were that in the five school districts chosen, um, they were based on disparities in black and white school discipline. 
So the black students at those schools were more than four to six times more likely to be suspended. Um, and then the teachers completed three bi-weekly surveys that consisted of information regarding how they believed students learn, beliefs about racial inequality in the US, and their classroom discipline practices. And then the teachers were also compensated with a $25 Amazon gift card, and the data was collected from November 2018 to January 2019. So the teachers also watched videos of white and black boys committing misbehaviors in school. Um, these videos are very important to make claims about the racialization of <laughs> the teacher's perceptions. Um, the videos were made in painstaking effort to make the characteristics of both boys as similar as to not cloud any sort of racial bias. And including the painstaking effort in their characteristics, they also made sure that the volume, video length, and the language that the kids used was very similar. Um, after the teachers watched the videos, they answered nine questions in relating to the stereotypes identified in the video. Um, four main highlights of the study were the four beliefs that were identified um, that the teachers possessed for racial inequality beliefs. There were cultural deficits that were linked to teachers viewing the black boys' behavior as hostile. And then there was also reinforcement of cultural deficits when um, they saw the black boys' behavior. And finally, there is the idea of the, Amer the American dream, which was further linked to the boys' behavior being more serious. So the four beliefs are post-racial. So the post-racial beliefs perceive that racism, discrimination, and prejudice are no longer a problem anymore in America. The American dream was often used as reasoning to explain the economic inequality in the United States, and it's harmful as it doesn't factor in systemic barriers. Um, there's the cultural deficit, Blacks' abilities and values were commonly used to explain the socioeconomic gaps found between Blacks and Whites. And then finally, the schooling inequality, and that there is a disparity between Blacks and Whites in academia regards to the school performance and discipline. Um, so continuing with the cultural de deficits, um, the cultural deficits of the teachers predicted their negative perceptions of both the Black boys' be behavior and, and positively impacted their perceptions of the White boys' behavior. So this factors into the culture of poverty, which argues that poor people, particularly blacks, share negative psychological traits that are then unconsciously given to their children. So these traits can include being unmotivated to work, not valuing education, lacking family values, and then being dependent on social systems. Um, and then finally, a person holding these beliefs is much more likely to associate them with faults of the individual and or their cultural values and then they can possibly manifest their teachers assuming that black students' academic disengagements or struggles are as a result of their own issues rather than any sort of systemic problems. So our main takeaways from our research was that personally, I thought it was really interesting that psychology didn't actually have any concentrations considering like how big of a department it is. You would think that they would have like subsects, but they pretty much just break all of like the department up into uh, minors and there's like the one big major of psychology. Um, my big takeaway from the presentation was really that um, racism is that abundant in our school systems, especially in North Carolina, which I won't say surprised me, but it's interesting seeing it in that perspective of actually like number-based. Yeah, for sure. And uh, my key takeaway, honestly, was just finding it shocking. Well, more surprising, honestly, just how big the psychology department is. I was not expecting it to be that huge, even though it is a pretty big discipline in general. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>